Welcome back to the California Gammy channel. Today I have a bunch of shipping to do with eBay, so I thought I would take you along with me and show you how I do it. The first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to go to your desktop. The mobile app can only be used for single item domestic orders. So if you have an international order or if you have a multiple item order, they're gonna force you to go to the desktop anyway. And since I have several orders, I'm just gonna go straight to the desktop. It's gonna be easier. Okay, so I've signed in again and now it says manage orders. So it's gonna have all the different items that I need to ship on here. So all you do, I'm not gonna show you all the way through because I don't wanna show my customers' names and addresses but you'll click on print shipping label and then after you click on print shipping label it will take you to the shipping of the order section and it'll show um, the type of shipping that the customer selected in this case they want USPS first class package it's an uh, hand blown glass ornament so I'm going to need to uh, package it very carefully and we're going to do that now Oh, and something that I forgot to mention, before you click on print shipping label, look at your custom label, your SKU, and in this case mine is AX15, so I'm going to go to my AX box and pull out number 15. And as you can see, there's my AX box. And now it's just a matter of pulling out number 15. Okay, so it took a little digging, but there's my AX15, and I've already got it bubble wrapped. So now I'm going to go and find one of my little boxes and add some bubble wrap to it. I keep all my boxes in one area. I have an assortment of sizes. For this item, I'm going to use one of my smaller ones. And they're right here. And they are... Uh, four, four by four by six inch box. I ordered those specifically for the ornaments. I've got several hundred of these ornaments to sell, and so these are perfect for um, them. They're still small, they can still ship first class mail, and it goes pretty quickly. cushioning as possible, especially on these small breakable items, while not making them too big or too heavy. The way that you can test it too, you want a nice sturdy box, and when you go like that, nothing moves. If it's a very expensive item, you can double box it. The problem with double boxing is since the the post office raised their rates this year. They go by dimensional weight, and when you double box, it makes the, you know, it would make this box twice as big. And I've been shipping them in these little boxes, and I haven't had anything break yet. If I had something break, I'd start doing the double boxes again, but for now, this works out really well. Then I'm gonna double, I'm gonna weigh it again, and it's only three ounces, so I'm gonna take out that one pound do three ounces. So using the app is pretty easy. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do how to print a label on all of the, the remaining six items that I have because I'm not going to waste your time with that. But I will show you the way that I pack a variety of items and the, the way that I pack them up so that they arrive safely. I have um, in the last thousand shipments that I've made, I've had one item get broken, and that was one that was um, actually a china teapot, and I did double box that one, and it had peanuts in it, and according to my customer, the post office delivered the box, and it was just completely smashed. So as unless the post office is going to completely smash your item, you're probably going to be safe with the ways that I ship. Um, 
you can't account for everything. If it's an expensive item, go ahead and add insurance to it. Um, but try to pack it so that you don't have to do the insurance because, um, you know, your, your customers are going to be happier if they have items that aren't broken. Okay, so this next item is, is fairly delicate and expensive. It's an American Brilliant style pressed cut glass crystal pinwheel pattern cake plate. And it's beautiful and I don't want it to break in shipment. So what I've already done is I've already wrapped it in bubble wrap and then I'm gonna double box this. Um, the way that I'm gonna double box this though is as small as possible. So the first box is gonna be just enough to firm up the edges. And I recycle boxes as much as possible. I save all my Amazon boxes and um, a lot of my friends do that for me too. I also, I buy bubble wrap and I buy some of the puffy pillows, but I save uh, as much of the packing material as I can. And I don't end up having to buy a lot of it. I, I try to use recycled materials whenever possible. So this box I think is gonna be perfect small. It's an Amazon box and it just barely will fit around this. This is going to be my first layer. It's going to go inside so I don't care about the labels. See, this thing fits right inside of here. That's why this isn't going to be the only box. If it were, if it got bumped, it would, it would shatter the corners on this. So this is the first box and see, it doesn't quite fill. So I'm going to get some more materials to fill it so that so I'm using what I have the most of and that I can get a hold of the easiest and it's recycled Amazon puffy pillows. These pillows are great. They can be used over and over again. When they deflate, I just put more in. So then we'll just close this up and then uh, get another box ready. That's the first box. But like I said earlier, it's way too small and close to the edges to be the only box. So now I'm going to get a box or make a box. I'm, I, a lot of times I cut them down, but I'll go ahead and get a box that is at least a couple inches all the way around for cushioning. And then I'll pad that, um, the, all the areas around it, and then we'll be good to go. So this box will work. Um, it's not bigger on two of the sides, but it is bigger on the ends and it's bigger on the bottom and the top. That should, that should be enough. Um, I do have the puppy pads underneath the bottom so that if it drops to the bottom, it's got the puffy pads. And then I'm gonna put puffy pads here, here, and on the top. And I'm gonna fill it so that it doesn't wiggle inside. So as you can see, I've got puffies underneath it, on both sides of it, and on the top. And then when I close it, there's, there's no jostling. Okay, so I finished boxing that up, and I just finished weighing it. And it came out six ounces higher, but a couple inches smaller. So the shipping price is gonna be about the same. You always want to round up with the post office. So if it's five pounds, 14 ounces, 14.3 ounces, that's 15 ounces. Um, the post office will send you a bill. And if you have enough items that aren't in line with the correct weight, then they'll, um, they'll ban you. So you don't want to do that. Now this customer had selected UPS Ground and I do have a UPS Ground account. I've actually got the phone number of my UPS delivery man and he just asked me to send him a text message whenever I have a pickup and so um, what I'm going to do with the mail items, I'll go ahead and schedule a pickup for tomorrow morning and I'll put everything in a box marked USPS on my front door and the postman will come and pick it up when he drops off the mail for the day. And then for the UPS um, deliveries, I will go ahead and text my UPS driver tomorrow and he'll just come pick it up um, when he comes in tomorrow around it. He usually comes here about 5.30. Um, you can also, if you don't have that, my guy's just, he's been delivering here for the last 20 years and he's super nice, super professional. Um, I'd ship everything UPS if I could, cause he's so, he's so great. Um, I've had more trouble with the, the post office, especially lately, them not wanting to pick things up. Um, if they don't pick it up um, with the morning mail, then when I do afternoon dog walks, um, which is about an hour before the post office closes, then I'll just go ahead and drop it off because the post office is on my way. Hi, Eddie. Hi, buddy. Do you not want to get in your bed? Are you here to help? What are you doing? What are you doing, bubs? Do 
you want to help show them how to ship? Are you a shipping expert? You're a good boy. For a 13 year old. For a teenager. You're a good little boy. Oh, I hear trouble coming though. And there she is. There's trouble. Hi, Betty. You gonna help me too? You gonna help me? You gonna help me ship? So my next item was a, a set of three pearl bl bracelets. I packed them the same way that I did the sterling silver box. Or the sterling silver belt buckle, rather. Um, they're just in a... A bubble mailer. Also on items like this, I know some people will just stick a stamp on it, which would be cheaper. The problem with just sticking a stamp on it is you have no tracking. And when you go through the eBay label system, you're going to spend a little bit more and so will your customer if you don't do free shipping, which I don't. But having the, the ability to track the item, to, for me, is essential, especially since a lot of the items that I send first class mail, even though they're light like this postcard, they're they're highly collectible and some of them command a pretty good price and I don't want to be out that. So keep that in mind when you're sticking a stamp on something. If it's something really cheap and you're willing to take the risk because all the customer has to do is say they never got it, it doesn't matter if they got it or not, you have no proof. And without proof, eBay will always err on the side of the customer. Okay, item number six is a vintage Hall Superior Autumn Leaf Enamel um, casserole pot. So like I said I, in my shipping video, I pre-pack everything when I put it into the tubs. I go ahead and bubble wrap things that need to be bubble wrapped and, uh, and label them so it's easy to find. So this one's going to be easy. I'm just going to add a little bit of bubble wrap to it and put it in the smallest box that'll fit around it. Because it's enamel, I don't want it to get chipped, but it's not going to break. I don't want it to get dented either though, so I am going to add some more bubble wrap to it. All right. I can't put it off anymore. I'm on the last item and it's the one that I least want to package up. It's a large, delicate piece of artwork. It lungs under a microscope, um, but it's sold and it's sold to a doctor. So I hope he enjoys it. Um, I'm going to go grab it and it's not going to be that hard to, to package up. I'm basically just going to bubble wrap it and then encase it in cardboard. I'm not going to make the box super huge because it'll be way too expensive with um, the dimensional weight shipping. This one's going to go UPS, so my nice UPS driver will pick it up from me tomorrow. But basically, I'm just going to, it's just unwieldy because it's so large. It's 30 by 36, and so it's big. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start bubble wrapping that now. And actually, before I bubble wrap it, I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. All right, so this is the piece of art. There's no glass, so that's good. What I am going to do to protect it from having anything stick to the painted surface is I am going to wrap it in with this roll. I'm going to go out to the dining room table for this. But I've got this roll of archival art paper, and this won't stick. It's kind of like wax paper without the wax. And I will wrap this as the first layer around the painting, and that will protect it from damage, and then I'll bubble wrap it from there. And then um, I've actually got a cardboard box that I've been saving for when I should. Um, I don't remember what came in it. I think it was sh a shelving unit or something. But I saved it, and I'm going to use that um, to put the artwork in. It's pretty much perfect. Actually, I'm just going to I'm just going to package it up here. protective layer is just to keep the, the painting from getting damaged, the actual paint. This doesn't provide any damage against breakage. It just keeps the painted surface okay. paper's got a little bit of waxiness to it. And now 
going to bubble wrap it. My bubble wrap isn't super wide, and so it's going to be a little bit of a bear. It may not be the prettiest thing, but it's going to be secure. wrap that has the perforated edges because then it tears easily. Like I'm getting much of this on the in the frame. Sorry about that. So let's see how it fits in this box that I saved. Oh, a whole lot of stuff in there. That's why that box was heavy. I'll use most of that. So I have a nice layer on the bottom. I think this is gonna fit. I'm gonna make it fit. And then I'm gonna use all that stuff I pulled out and just pack it in. There's no glass in here, so I think this will be good. That came in handy because I just ran out of I just ran out of the puffy pillows. Now this one ha this box has a lot of other labels on it already. I'll put my new shipping label over this. I'll remove as many of them as I can because sometimes these barcodes can get get you in trouble. If they don't come off, then I'll take a black sharpie to to the barcodes and I'll scratch over them. But I'll take off the ones that I can. They're on pretty good though, so it's probably gonna be a shark. You know, I had been putting that off, but it really wasn't half as bad as I thought it was thanks to this box. Then I'll just go ahead and tape that up, print a label on it, and it'll be ready. Ready to go tomorrow. All right, so I've packed up all the items that need to go out tomorrow. And about half of them are UPS and half of them are USPS. Tomorrow I will uh, text my UPS driver. If I didn't have that capacity, I would schedule a pickup online through the app. With uh, the post office, you have to schedule a pickup the day before. So I'm doing that now. You just go to USPS. Actually, I just Googled um, because I was already out of the label section. There is a spot in the labeling where it allows you to schedule a pickup. I had, the last order that I had prepared was a UPS order, so it didn't allow me to go back to schedule a pickup from the eBay shipping label section. But it's easy. You just go to Google and you type in schedule a pickup USPS and it takes you right to the, the page that you need. I use it regularly, so it pre-fills all my information as soon as I start typing my name. Um, after that, you click on check availability, then they ask you the location, I put on the, um, I put front door, then you just schedule the day, I'm scheduling it for tomorrow. Four for USPS, and you get a confirmation number, it's that easy. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope uh, it takes some of the mystery out of shipping. You just want to make sure your stuff gets there and doesn't get broken. You want to make sure that you always send using a trackable method because if you can't track it, you can't prove that you shipped it. And there are people out there who will take advantage, so you don't want to do that. I get my materials as free as possible um, or as close to free. 
Um, I get a lot of boxes that I recycle. I get the free boxes whenever I can on eBay. And if I run out of something and I need it, then I'll go ahead and buy a box. But I don't. the things that I end up uh, spending money on are the bubble wrap and the puffy pillows. And once my clients found out that I did eBay on the side and that I need puffy pillows, they have sent me home with garbage bags full of puffy pillows because Amazon likes puffy pillows. So, hey, I'll take free shipping materials until I have no more room to store them. And that was the point that I was at. I've been telling them no lately. So I need to start telling them yes and turn that spigot back on. So anyway, I hope that this helps somebody with their shipping. If you'd like to see what else I can come up with um, to save money and to maybe make a little bit of money, please subscribe. Um, if not, Thanks for watching.